Welcome, my friend. Everyone has rhythm, even those who don't think they do. Okay, that's a blatant lie. This uh, pasty face weave doesn't have a rhythmic bone in his body. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy the genre. Hey gamers, Spammer D here, and despite what you may see, I do enjoy rhythm games. And that goes double when it's just drenched in weave culture the way Muse Dash is. Released back in 2018 for PC and mobile, as well as a year later on the Switch, Muse Dash is an addictive rhythm game that is simple to pick up and play, but difficult to master. Which means that it's, a uh, basically impossible for me. But let's try anyway. Starting up, you play as one of three cute anime girls, or more if you include the DLC, as they rock their way through hordes of... Mm, probably the most colorful and sporadic hordes of nonsense you will ever see in a game. Angry clouds, candy corn, phones, vampires, and just so much more. Just look at all this. Sadly, there's no actual story in this game to explain any of it. It's just wackiness for wackiness sake. But man, if it isn't some gorgeous wackiness. Yeah, graphically, this game really stands out with its bright, vibrant, playful art style that manages to somehow cohesively fuse together a variety of locales like a lumberjack forest, a spooky castle, and a retro city. And despite all the madness, it never actually interferes with the gameplay. In fact, the color coding, red for bottom row, blue for top, and yellow for both, make it quick and easy to identify threats, which is just good design. Overall, the style just works and kind of reminds me of Teen Titans, really hitting that sweet spot between Western cartoons and Japanese anime. Though the anime side is definitely more prevalent, especially in certain areas. Like the music! Yeah, easily one of the most important aspects to any rhythm game ever has to be the soundtrack. And Muse Dash's soundtrack is an ear-to-ear -ear weeb symphony. It feels like I'm listening to the soundtrack to an anime convention. And I love it. Though that soundtrack is absolutely gonna get me hammered by YouTube, but uh, who cares? Tracks are just bursting with energy, perfect for trying to get in sync with, with so many of them just feeling like they could be OPs for any number of animes. There are kick-ass action tracks, light-hearted bubbly tracks, and as you'd expect, a few goofball tracks thrown in for good measure. It runs the gambit. And of course, a good number of them are in Japanese. Plus, there are a few Vocaloids in there, and even a well-known VTuber. And yes, yes, I can hear you all typing like mad in the comments below. I'll get to it, I promise. Just hold your crazy colored horses. But for now, obviously, if this kind of music isn't for you, you're probably not gonna like this one. But if it is your jam, then Muse Dash is no slouch. Releasing with 41 tracks, and more if you include the DLC. But that DLC... Let's touch on that for a brief second, shall we? Regardless of what you're playing on, Vanilla Muse Dash will only run you about two or three dollars. Nice. It's actually a pretty solid deal as it will probably take the average player a few hours to unlock all the stages. And on top of that, almost every stage comes with an easy mode and a hard mode, plus an expert mode to unlock. Adding on to that are the different objectives for each stage and difficulty setting like perfectly dodging buzzsaws or landing a full combo. Not to mention all the other unlockables and achievements to go after, including character skins, helpers, and artwork. It's a lot on its own to be sure, but if you're still hankering for a little more, the DLC, which to be fair is a lot of tracks and is still ongoing, will cost you upwards of 30 big ones. Kind of crazy compared to the vanilla price. But by the time you run out of vanilla songs, you should know if it's worth the investment for you or not. And I can totally see how it could be too. This game is so simple, but it's just so much fun. As each stage begins, a song starts playing and enemies start pouring down the line. And you want to smack as many of them as you can, as accurately as you can. Which is much, much tougher than it looks. And it looks pretty tough. Especially as the difficulty ramps up and foes start popping up out of nowhere or just show up in mass. 
And when I say foes, I mean basically anything and everything under the sun. If it is color-coded blue, red, or yellow, you beat it down. Including bullets. Bullets that would have gone over your head and were no threat to you at all. But these girls, these girls are badasses. And badasses go for high scores. So you smack those bullets, whack those bombs, and punch those ghosts. Right in the face. Just try not to get hit yourself. If only it were that simple. And here's where I want to mention a little oddity with the controls. The ground attack, or red row attack, is just a simple button click. Perfect for fast paced action. But the aerial attack, or blue row attack, requires you to jump first. Which I know sounds like, duh. But jump and attack are the same button. And that takes a little getting used to. Especially when accuracy is on the line. But after a while, I just kind of started doing it without even thinking about it, so it's no biggie. But if you still find yourself struggling, swapping characters, skins, and helpers can definitely improve your odds, because the different characters and unlockables are more than just mere cosmetics. Increased health, increased healing, and increased EXP gain are only a few of the bonuses available to you. So the more you play, the more you unlock, and the closer you get to finding what best fits you. Which is cool, and definitely makes going back to those earlier stages that kicked your butt, kicked my butt, feel all the more rewarding when I ace them. Honestly, I really don't have anything negative to say about the game itself, outside of that minor control oddity and, you know, maybe the lack of a story. But unfortunately, that isn't to say there isn't at least one kind of big issue surrounding the game. Yeah, while this doesn't affect the game directly, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention it. As stated earlier, the game features a song from a famous VTuber from Hololive. It's even featured in one of the unlockable splash screens, showing off that logo prominently. Now, if you don't know what a VTuber is, basically they're just virtual YouTubers, who among other things, tend to livestream games. And damn if a certain shark girl isn't a god at this game. But ironically, due to the worst thing ever, politics. The Hollow Live Girls are banned from streaming this game. Now, I'm not gonna go into the why. If you wanna know more, feel free to look it up yourself. But I do know that a lot of fans are upset about that, and rightfully so. I know that I'd throw down some extra cash if a certain Apex Predator became a playable character. But hey, if they just want to leave that cash sitting on the table. Still though, if you're the type that can look past that, separate the art from the artist, or company in this case, or, you know, just don't care, then realistically, you have nothing holding you back. Muse Dash shines with its delightful, wacky, and colorful visuals and music to match. Add in very simple but very fun and very addicting gameplay, once you start, you'll find yourself going, you know, just, just one more song. Just, just one more. If you like rhythm games and weeb culture, then Muse Dash is an absolute must play. And even if you're skeptical or just aren't that big into the genre, like myself, at less than $5, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Muse Dash comes highly recommended.